All right, so I'm just going to read this. Morality, ethics of a self-driving car. Who gets to decide who lives or dies? Hmm, interesting. It's interesting how your media, they already know about this technology and how they write about it and how they give you like a quote-unquote a scenario into the future. Huh. All right, here we go, boys and girls. Consider this hypothetical. It's a bright, sunny day, and you're alone in a spanking new self-driving vehicle. I'm sure that you paid for that one. You're sitting back enjoying the view, moving at a 45 mile per hour speed limit. As you approach a rise in the road heading south, a school bus appears, driving north, driving, driven by a human. Oh my gosh, it's a human. It's a human, people. And it veers sharply towards you. There's no time to stop safely and no time for you to take control. Okay, well, if you're a human and the bus driver's a human, you're both human. Right? So you got two humans. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Does the car A swervely sharp into the trees, possibly killing you, but possibly saving the bus and its occupants? Perform a sharp, evasive maneuver around the bus and into an oncoming lane, possibly saving you, but sending the bus and the driving swerving into the trees, killing her and someone and the children on the board? On board? Hit, hit the bus, possibly killing you as well as the driver and kids on the bus. Wow, this sounds like a really positive article. Hmm. In everyday driving, such as no win choices, may be exceedingly rare, but when they happen, what should a self-driving car or programmed in advance do? Or in any situation, even a less dire one, where a moral snap judgment must be made. It is not, not just a theoretical question anymore with the predictions that in a few years, tens of thousands of semi-autonomous vehicles may be on the roads, you know, on the roads, period. Investment in this field totals about $80 billion, boys and girls. Companies like Google, ooh, Goo, as in black goo, affiliated Waymo are working feverishly on them. Mobility companies like Uber and Tesla are racing to beat them. Now, I had someone that bought a Tesla, or I should say rented one, and this person hated the damn car. You know why? Because there was like this button thing. He had This person had to constantly hit it so that he could take control of the car. It was ridiculous. It was scary, too. Okay, Tesla are racing to beat them. Detroit's automakers are placing a big bet on them. There's every reason for excitement. Self-driving vehicles will ease commutes, returning lost times to workers, enhance mobility for seniors and those with physical challenges, and sharply reduce the number of deaths on U.S. highways. Each year near about, <clears throat> with each near about, about $35,000. So what this report has done he gives you a bad scenario, and then he turns around and gives you a good scenario as to why the self-driving cars are needed. Okay, to help senior people, physical disability, and you know, oh, there's the excuse for us to have a, a car that is not human. Okay? But there are other questions to be sorted out as well, like what happens to cab drivers and whether such vehicles will create sprawl. And then there's an existential question. Who dies when the car is forced into a no-win situation? Quote, oh, there will be crashes, says Vin Lindbergh, an attorney in Decoma Law Firm, who specializes in autonomous vehicle issues. Okay, so now they're predicting deaths. Okay, and this is where the lawyers step in. Okay, see, see people, you have to understand and read the lines. How does this planet run? It's run on money, back insurance, and, you know, they already have all this stuff planned out, these reptilians. I'm telling you. Okay? I'm not stupid. You got to look into this, okay? All right, so here you got this lawyer says, there will be crashes. Unusual things will happen. Trees will fall. Well, yeah, doesn't that happen already? Act of God, your hurricanes will happen. Trees will fall, animals, kids will dart out, even self-driving cars have saved thousands of lives. Well, isn't that the same scenario when Ford came out with his T-Mobile cars? The same thing. It's the same thing, people. Remember, history repeats itself, okay? Except they want to launch you into space. Anyone who gets in the short end of that stick is going to be pretty unhappy about it. Few people seem to be in a hurry to take on these questions, at least publicly. It's unaddressed, for example, in legislation moving through Congress that could result in tens of thousands of autonomous vehicles um, being put on the roads. 
In new guidance for auton automakers by the U.S. Department of Transportation, it is cons consigned a footnote that says that only ethic considerations are important and links to a brief acknowledgement that no consensus around acceptable ethical decision making has been reached. There is evidence that people are worried about the choices of self-driving cars will be programmed to take. Last year, for example, a Daimler executive was quoted as saying its autonomous vehicles would prioritize the lives of passengers over anyone outside the car. The company later said that he misquoted since it would be illegal to make a decision in favor of one person and against another. Last month, Sebastian Thrun, who founded Google's self-driving car initiative, told Bloomberg's that the cars will be designed to avoid accidents, but that, quote, if it happens, there is a situation where a car couldn't escape, it will go for the smaller thing, end of quote. But what is that smaller thing is a child. Yeah. How that question gets answered may be important to the development and acceptance of self-driving cars. Asim Sheriff, an assistant professor of psychology. Oh, you got a psychi, you got a shrink in this one too. A social behavior. Ooh, social behavior. And University of California, Irvine co-authored a study last year that found that while respondents generally agreed that a car should, in the case of an inevitable crash, kill as few as number of people possible. Wow, this is such a positive article, people. Okay they were less likely to buy any car in which they and their family members would be sacrificed for the greater good. Sacrifice. That's satanic. Now, isn't it, boys and girls? That's reptilian. That's your masons. That's your black and white masonic checkerboard business. Bing, ding, 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 ding. Damn, I'm good. Self-driving cars could save tens of thousands of lives each year. Sheriff said, but individual fears could s slow down acceptance, leaving traditional cars and their human drivers, ooh, we're human, human drivers, on the road longer to battle it out with autonomous or semi-autonomous cars. The American Automobile Association says that three quarters of the U.S. drivers are suspicious of self-driving vehicles. Quote, these ethical problems are not just theoretical, says Patrick Lynn, the director of the Ethics and Emerging Sciences Group at California Polytechnic State University, wow, what a title, who had worked with Ford, Tesla, and, and other autonomous vehicles maker, makers on just such issues. While he can't talk about the specific dis discussions, Lynn says, some autonomous makers simply de deny that, that ethics is a real problem without realizing that they're making ethical judgment calls at the time in their development determining what object the cars will quote unquote see how it will predict, and those objects will do next, and what the car's reaction should be. So, end of story. That's the, the article. So, yeah. I, you know, I could tear this article up, man. People. You got people behind the scenes. They're developing all this technology out right now, okay? And they're throwing it out there, okay? And what they're doing is they're seeing how the rats go in the maze, okay? Don't be a rat, okay? Common sense tells you that you don't want a self-driving car because you don't want to be responsible for someone else, okay? They're doing the same thing. It's always the backdoor method of quote-unquote insurance and lawyers and doctors always involved. Those three factors, you got doctors involved, you got uh, your lawyers involved, and you got your insurance companies involved. Okay? Always, always think who benefits from this technology? I already know who benefits. It's the big wigs. Okay? It's the top of the pyramid people. Okay? They're throwing this technology out. I mean, this is a horrible article because what they're doing is they're giving you a scenario and then they're saying like, um, you know, this robot is, it, this car is, you know, going to make uh, judgment calls on you. You as a human being. <laughs> I'd rather walk the street or ride a bike than get in one of these cars. Period. Okay. I don't know. You know, you're looking at the Jetsons here. So... Get back to basics, people. OK? 
okay? This is the same scenario. This is the same stuff that they're spewing out when the, when I'm sure when um, Henry Ford and all the industrial age revolution occurred. You know, is it safe? Is it not safe? What's suppose a dog, you know, comes out of the street, you know? Well, I see my gang stalkers all the time and they always do this stuff, you know? They try to get in your face and stuff. You know, but this was alarming, you know, this whole thing, you know? Um, a car should, in the case of an in inevitable crash, kill the fewest number of people possible, okay? So that's predictive programming, okay? If you're in the TI community, you already know what predictive programming it is all about, okay? That's what they're doing with these machines, so. Hey. All right, I'll be back. I'll probably have something else to report right now. I'm, I'm going to go look at this FBI silent on email hacking. So, so I, I don't know. I wish you the best. Have a good day, and um, make sure you eat a balanced meal. Stay focused on who and what you are. You're a human being. You walk this earth, okay? You're not a freaking robot. I'll be back.